Hello, party people, and welcome to another episode of the Elseworlds Exchange. I am Sal. And I'm Joel. Hey, we're going to be talking about Spider-Man villains that were recently invented. And it's so funny because this is a... Joel, you pitched this idea a while back, yes. and I'm like, that sounds great because I have so many opinions about so many new new Spider-Man villains. Mm -hmm. One of them is Morlun, and I'm like, Morlun was invented almost 20 years ago. I know. I get it. This is hard, <laughs> this is hard to do. We, we did this with Batman, and I did a lot of legwork for that video, too. Yeah. And it was much easier to get new Batman villains from the last t uh, 15 to 20 years because usually there's a pretty steady rollout of them. With Spider-Man, I really had to think and I really had to work and I really had to go into my long boxes. I'm like, does yeah. this guy even count as new? Was that new? Well, that's clearly much longer ago. So I was trying to think, I'm like, okay, from like a brand new day onward, I think yeah. is a good place to start. And even that's then, fair. I'm sure I missed a couple. Right. Well, because, uh, you know, there are other characters that are connected to new characters or characters that people consider to be new mm. that are still part of the whole conversation. I mean, people still think Morlun is new and they still, and you know, it's funny. There's, there's only like a handful of stories about him. So it's like, yep. well, I guess he is still kind of new. He, he, well, I think you'll find as we roll through this rogues gallery that there is a consistency of this type Mm -hmm. that is in their inconsistencies. And I think it's because if you put Morlun next to the rogues gallery that you're the familiar classics. with, the classics, the Sinister Six and more, you'll he sticks out like a sore effing thumb. Certainly does. And there's a lot of that. Right. And and I think that that's the that's the motley crew we have assembled here today is just a bunch of characters that are like, those are Spider-Man villains? Apparently so. And again, when I was trying to read other people's work, because I try and do my research and due diligence for this show, even other people were stretching in ways I never were. Like some people, one guy I saw put, n like from an actual like respected publication, put Null on the list. I'm like, no, he's a goddamn Venom villain. He debuted in a Venom book for a Venom event. Yeah, Peter fought him a little bit arguably miles fought him more yes. and then they're like oh we, we should put some miles villains in here too like the rabble and the assassin like, no no no, those are miles villain yes yeah. yeah that's not the same thing at all uh, null is quintessentially a, a, a venom villain i think null wouldn't even know who spider-man was yeah who spider who, who is this <laughs> yeah is this the guy who gives you so much trouble yeah nice no, uh, that's uh, nice, kind of uh, nice symbol on your chest mine's a dragon R exactly oh you got a little dragon on yours he's <laughs> like this is a spider man <laughs> Uh, but yeah, listen, uh, we want to thank you all for watching. But before we jump into it, we want to mention, of course, this show is sponsored by viewers like you. If you have an opinion or a thought or a comment or question you want to make, you can use so uh, you can do so by using Super Chats. Ask a question or comment. We'll put it here on the show and uh, the proceeds of which go through to pay rent and heat, which uh, I've just been dealing with. And you may mm -hmm. see our intrepid heat uh, technician come by because uh, I came here with uh, no apprehensions or preconceived ideas about what was going on. But I overheard some commotion uh, <laughs> while Joel and I were preparing for the pre-show. And uh, the uh, apparently the neighbors complained about like some kind of heating issue that they're having. And I noticed that it was similar in our building because it was 64 degrees in here when I got, when I got <laughs> in. So uh, he's been checking. So I just wanted to be as accommodating as possible. So he may, pop in which is why the door is unlocked who knows maybe a creepy salesman will show up and try to give us uh small business insurance we'll, never, we'll never know you're building quite your own rogues gallery over there heating guy yeah he's cool though the heating guy has he been is. cool yeah uh, and uh and, and paver guy came Ooh. and filled in like you know six inch deep holes throughout our driveway which is <laughs> thankfully i i was so used to just driving on the wrong side of the road to get around it and then today i did it and i was like oh they're all filled and then I saw the paver truck at the end, like all the way at the end of the road where we park. I was like, oh, hello. Thank you. Uh, but yeah. So, um, yeah, there's going to be a ton of these characters. I think we should probably talk about when they were invented too, to kind of like. Yeah, it helps. Because we're going to be ranking them. But first, we're going to we're just going to roll through them, I think. I think yeah. that's the idea. We'll, 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 you know what we should do? Just just decide. We'll use like the tier system. Oh, that way we don't yes. have to go over it. Uh, like. S tier, A tier, B tier, D tier. Um, the kids love that. <laughs> exactly. But it's S, A, B, uh, C, D, E, F. That's it. 
So, That's the Capcom system, isn't it? Where S tier was like the highest tier you could exactly. get. Exactly. So S tier is the highest. I wonder if there will be any, mm. but we'll 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 try to bracket them and uh, and somebody in the comments maybe can uh, make a list out of that. Sounds good. I was list. I was gonna say, do we also have to grade these on a curve? Because I was gonna say, I think right? for, for new Spider Man villains, like obviously compared to like the worst Doc Ock story, yeah, they might be or, all right. But like compared to themselves, some are definitely better than others, right? Or if you want to talk to a like a spider-man fan who is in his like 50s and 60s new spider-man villains right are characters like the hobgoblin Eh. and venom Mm -hmm. and it's like oh that's that's stiff competition i don't think we should be able to say oh is overdrive in the same category as carnage i i think not uh and by the way there's no ongoing ram v overdrive book right now (laughs) I don't think as well there shouldn't be, but, uh, but we're, I, I think that in as much as we won't be grading on a curve, we won't be saying, are they as memorable or as timeless as Venom or Hobgoblin or, uh, you know, other new characters that were invented mm. at the time. Silver Sable was a black cat. That's These true. are all new villains that were invented during Spider-Man's history, but still, um, you know, history integrated them into some other bracket (laughs) but uh yeah man um let's let's jump uh, yes somebody asked if overdrive's been appeared more than once absolutely no you'd be surprised how often he's appeared indeed um but yeah so um let's just let's just jump into it uh should we talk about the elephant in the room should we talk about more lun we might as well because i put this guy on the top of the list because i think just via sheer force of will and repeated appearances, I think Morlan has carved out a nice little, you know, niche for himself as far as Spider-Man villains go. He certainly came in with a lot of pomp and circumstance and a big story that people really remember. Arguably diminishing returns ever since then, but they keep yeah. adding stuff. He's got a family. We know he's part of a race called the Inheritors now. And if they put him in a video game or if they put him in a movie, I think people would be really excited about that. I agree. Sorry, I just... Uh push the wrong button yes um i think that morlun should be separate from the inheritors i think that that morlun is a different kind of thing because whereas i i did like morlun's jesus sorry (laughs) this this is what happens when we get cool (laughs) yeah there we go all right um i think that since i loved morlun's debut i thought it was great and have never liked a Morlon story since then. Mm, again, diminishing returns. You started way too strong. You got the Bane problem. You yeah. peaked too early in your life. I will say, too, you know, when compared to a lot of other Spider-Man reels, he cuts a good silhouette. He's got a good gimmick going on. He dresses like a weird Victorian vampire. So, yes, again, he does. doesn't look like any other Spider-Man film. Has his basis in magic and mysticism, yeah. which puts him in a whole other, you know, category compared to most Spider-Man foes that are all about science and technology technology and everything absolutely he even in the other which is a story that i don't like Mm. but i do appreciate it especially when you compare it to diminishing returns like you've said yeah uh he's still more intimidating and interesting and scary in that than he is ever again yeah so there, there are, there is some kind of benefit to him. I, I, I understand the, uh, the motivation behind Morlun. So, uh, more. Do we have, uh, do we have any bios in these guys? Like, should we talk about like when they were invented? And when uh, I mean, I, I guess we like, should there. But yeah, you know, he's uh, I, I again, you know, I, I put him here on the list of newer villains. But as someone That's... points out, the dude debuted in two thousand one. So he's two thousand one. He so is fuck he's... me. He's already two decades old. He's twenty two years old. That's how long that character was was uh, has been around. Twenty two years. He's probably had five stories. Maybe That's less. That's true. <laughs> and, and, and I will say too, he's had that, and he's also had like very very long periods of inactivity in between yes. stories. So he didn't get a lot back to back which which will be something we'll talk about later because some of these characters actually did get a few fair amount of stories back to back because they were really yeah. pushed him more yeah. came out had his thing long period of inactivity only yeah. for slot to resurrect him again for spider-verse but you know what else is interesting about the uh the, the legacy and how long these characters have stuck around if they have any staying mm. power whatsoever people still consider more new when he's 22 years old 
which should tell us a lot about the current state of Spider-Man villains, and that is you don't get that many new ones, and when you do, even less actually stick around. So the cream, I guess in this case of Morlunt, did rise to the top and did stick in people's minds. Because, yeah, I, I was looking around at all the lists, and Morlunt was on every single list. That's true. But I also wonder, is that a good thing? Because I think that, uh, you know, by the, if you were, if you were in the thick of it in 1962 <laughs> and you were reading Spider-Man comics and they had a new villain, every issue, you know, mm. chame chameleon first villain, first costume villain he fights is an espionage character. Yep. Then the next one I think is vulture. Mm -hmm. So it's old geriatric flying man. <laughs> You know, and then and then and then it's like Doc Ock and Mysterio. And it's like, I wonder if Mysterio and when Mysterio shows up and people were like, is this, is this where we're going with this? Like this Fish new character an illusionist. Right. Will he ever stick around? And, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he Mysterio ironically doesn't have more than like two good stories. And there's also memorable like ones. five different Mysterios. That's true. That's true. Which is another but, uh, thing we're going to have to talk about when we talk about Spider-Man villains. In many cases, new Spider-Man villains are old characters wearing new hats or new characters wearing old hats. <laughs> yeah, that's that's where it gets rough. Because I know, I mean, Green Goblin, oh, just Norman Osborn, he dies. Yep. Then it's Harry's psychiatrist. Yep. And Who then has it's not been seen forever. Yeah, well, he he got resurrected. He died, and then he got resurrected in the clone conspiracy. Yep. Um, Gray Goblin. I was just reminded of that, uh, which is not new. He was also invented in two thousand one too. Then you got you know, the so. Goblin robots and everything else. There, there's a whole cavalcade of shit. <laughs> it's true. So let's go ahead and rank more Lun um, on the strength of his first appearance. I think he's going to rank higher than a couple of these characters. Yes, in fact, I, I dare say Moreland sets the gold standard for newer Spider-Man villains, and that is he is still highly regarded all yep. this time later. And even though, yeah, many diminishing returns, I don't think they've hurt him that much. Because again, I think if you put him in a movie or a video game or something tomorrow or on a new animated series, if that ever gets rolling, I think yeah. people would be like, no, oh, it's fucking Moreland. It's going to be a big deal. Yes, I, I also think that people like he still has maintained the fear aspect. Like There's he's still an air of menace. Yeah, yeah. It's not like a joke, you know. Where uh, you know Venom used to be really scary yeah. when he showed up, to the point where now like he's had lunch at their house. It's yeah. just kind of like, oh, okay. Well, that's he's the, the fear aspect is over. It's true. Yeah. Again, he does not have an air of menace anymore. And even when they try and flirt with making him a villain again, like ever so briefly in dark web, I'm like, nope, doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. But Morlun, especially divorced, if it's just Morlun on his own, I'd say we can make him. I mean, like, I think he is the closest thing to an A tier new villain. We can Agreed. muster. Uh, I, I begrudgingly give him that honor. I'm not going to call him an S tier because it's not like I'm no. like, that was, you nailed it and I love it. And it's, he, he might as well, he, he, st he stacks shoulder to shoulder with the rest of them. No. Yeah, couldn't imagine the universe without him now. What a great new addition to the Pantheon. Precisely. Absolutely not. No, 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 no. Um, meanwhile, on the other end of the spectrum, I guess we could also compare him to his family, the Inheritors. Yeah, fair enough. Let's, because they're also new villains and new characters. Yeah, let's yeah. put them in there. Now, the Inheritors were invented in 2009. Yeah. That was the first time we saw them. Uh, and the last time we saw them was 2018. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He, these characters, this is taking an idea that's arguably difficult to make work, which is more Lun, and then multiplying him. By the power of one, two, three, four, five, six, give or take seven. Yeah, not to mention their patriarch, and then the uh, the one that got kicked out, who's like who became the weaver for a oh, minute. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much about these characters that I never bothered to learn, and it never hurt me in the, like, expert department. You you put a gun to my head, I can't tell you any of their fucking names. <laughs> yes. Which is why I'm gonna rank them as F-tier. I That's think that fun. these are a complete and utter failure. There was there was never any fear. The only thing that they had to they had to kill characters that you might have wanted to see during Spider Verse, mm. rather than 
doing anything of any mem- and, uh, uh, of any import. And we needed to justify killing them because Spider-Verse stories end up being big team stories. They can't all fight Morlun, so we need to make other Morluns for them to fight, so we might yes. as well say he's part of a family. Exactly. The, the, the word derivative, Sal, gets thrown around a lot these days. It does. But I would call them all very derivative. I think you're absolutely right. They earned the term derivative. I give them F tier. This is a this is just a, a face plant of a, of a, of a thing. E- and, even their uh, defeat is hilarious too again oh, i know yeah. i brought them back after but it's like we're gonna trap you in an irradiated hell world where all you can eat is little spiders that have inherited the world yeah and they just like i feel like no one would want to bother like no one wants to use these characters no um because why quick... would you when morlon is right there exactly yeah can you imagine you're like oh man i'm i'm, I'm finally on spider-man i'm doing this story and I, I have this idea it's gonna be like the terminator like just unstoppable force I want to use more and they're like oh more Lun was already in this other thing um but you can use any or all of the inheritors oh oh well, then i'd rather not do it yeah i guess i'll just create an original villain <laughs> exactly <laughs> But, but what about the twins? The twins are fun. There's two of them. Right? Uh, here's another one that, like, I don't understand at all. And it's weird because, like, she is not even a new character. She was invented. She's she's 40 years old. Holy shit. It's a 40-year-old character. But I can't believe that's the case. And it's White Rabbit. Yeah, White Rabbit, who has been getting more love recently in the new run than I think we've seen a lot of multiple stories yeah. dedicated to the inner life of White Rabbit and the now weird will they, won't they of her and her henchman, who's like kind of a good guy because he saved I... Spider-Man and then Spider-Man saved him. Right. I, I, I have never understood liked or cared about this character at all she's an f for me because like i didn't even i like i remember seeing her in something drawn by humberto ramos for like what i assumed was the first time and then i find out that she's 40 and i'm like wait how many stories has she been in and then i realize they throw her in when they're like we need a crowd scene we need a crowd of villains because people like drawing her is the thing people like drawing the pretty rabid lady Uh, i would say maybe even she deserves to get a little out of f maybe like an f plus just because people yeah. like drawing the pretty lady and putting the pretty lady on things right I, i'll i'll yeah i I've, i don't know her real name she does not stack no. up against any of the characters I, shit, I, I don't either like right i don't know anything about her i'll i will never learn anything about her for me that's an f yep. i'll say f i'll say f plus because we don't have pluses and minuses but like <laughs> this is a character where i'm like that's that's just you are a waste there's nothing good about you no your your best white rabbit story is the last wholly one. irrelevant to me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, let's jump into another. Let's jump into a more recent creation. Um, let's talk about Jackpot. Yeah. Jackpot. Now, what, what's your deal with Jackpot? Are we talking about like the? Because there, there's a difference. There's there's the bait and switch. Oh, this is the uh, hero or the, the 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 50 state initiative Jackpot character. The one that the, looks like Mary Jane was the one. The one looks like thinking. Mary Jane. Okay, because this is there's a couple, or maybe it's the same one. I don't know. I don't know either. I just know that there was a minute there when Sony was like, we're going to make a jackpot movie. Why? Because she yeah. kind of looks like Mary Jane. Yeah. I don't even know if she's a villain. I, I don't fucking know either. I just know that she was on a bunch of lists. And I'm like, all right, I don't even remember the original jackpot story. When you said 50 State Initiative, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was, that was kind of a thing that happened, wasn't it? Yeah, she modeled herself after her favorite movie star. I think that was the idea. That was Sarah uh, Errett. Oh, uh, Okay. And then yes. there was another one named yeah, Alana fuck. Jobson. Yeah, fuck me. Are they even villains? <laughs> right. I, I doubt it. I don't they, think so. They keep getting listed amongst them, but that does that just tell me that no one actually read anything with Jackpot? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think that's absolutely true. Um, but yeah, no, they never did anything. Nobody cares about them. This is another F. This is a fail. Like just a complete fail. They, and, nothing happened with these with, with with any of the jackpots except for the fact that mark guggenheim has his own effing three issue miniseries about this character and it's like really why which means he still might get that sony movie one of these days <laughs> yeah i mean if, if you are trying to bank on you know characters <laughs> if you're trying to bank on sony just making an effing character <sighs> Sure, why not? You, you could you you could do worse than trying to use a, a Spider-Man character because you oh, might hey, just get a movie out of it. Uh, here's a character who I forgot who is definitely a villain and didn't add to the list. I'll just throw it right there. Yeah, the, the new version of the Trapster 
but not spelled trapster, spelled in leet speak, the lady trapster who joins the oh. Sinister Syndicate. She fights Spider-Man in a new, co- in a free comic book day issue. And it's like, <laughs> holy shit, are you a new trapster? Yep. And she's like better than the old one, which is not a hard freaking, you know, hurdle to clear because Pace Pop Pete sucks. And that's yes. the joke. And then yes. she joins the girl gang and then we never see her solo act again. But I just think it's funny that they created a villain called Trapsta. And it's yep. spelled in leet speak, and she looks like every hacker girl uh, stereotype. She looks, she she looks like Jet from that new Law and Order organized crime. She looks <laughs> like the lady who works the computers for them. Yeah, I don't know. <sighs> this is a this is not even worth a, a, a ranking. It's so it's frustrating a, how it's like. I don't want to be a hater. I don't want to sound like it's like, oh man, like anything new sucks. Bad. But like. Why do you like this character? I I mean, I think she definitely served her purpose as being a Nick Spencer joke. This is when Nick Spencer, right. you know, when they didn't totally kill, you know, his fun loving nature <laughs> and he he yeah. still did jokes every so this is a character who again probably wouldn't have worked in Spider-Man, but totally would have worked in Sinister Foes. This is a Sinister Foes character as well. Yeah, this there's the you know what it is F, F I think is like there's no redemption, there's no potential. I think Trapster, you could do something with Trapster. I'll oh, make yeah. her a I'll give her a D. That's fun, yeah, because there's like nothing written in stone about her. She could come back tomorrow and do something fairly interesting. Because again, the whole you know trap idea is pretty solid. I mean, fucking Pace Pod Pete stuck around for as long as he did. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Like even um, as a joke character, Marvel loves a good joke character. Right, that's true. By the way, Trapster was invented in 2017. There so you go. Definitely new. Five years old. Yeah, definitely new. falls into the new category. Exactly. Um, there's a character that I hate with a passion, and it's <laughs> only because it's such an uninteresting concept. It was a concept that I was like, this screams, you said to make this, <laughs> and here we are now, and it's Overdrive. Ah, yes. I loathe Overdrive. I Did don't understand anything, it. anything, though? That, wh- what? <laughs> what kind of power is that? That's just Fa- a guy. <laughs> Fast and the Furious. He can drive anything. Right? That's awful. He's the um, ultimate getaway man. So? <laughs> you know, like, what, what is that? What, what, what is that? Spider-Man doesn't have a car. They made a thing about how the, the spider buggy was actually an impediment because he lives in New York City. And then your New York-based supervillain is a guy who can drive anything. Like, that's, <laughs> again, Spider-Man, who doesn't have a car, is an un- unencumbered, can web your wheels. It's a terrible concept. Uh- but but it could work if he's compelling interesting or has some kind of fun element to his character but i die but but i think you know what we're talking about here there isn't one not as a villain he's actually very fun again in sinister foes where he's yes. played as a joke and is part of shocker and boomerangs like lame ass crew of villains very great for comedy in fact hey i'll even give him this his best story he's not even a villain in it's near the end of the spencer yes. run where like him and carly cooper are, like almost getting a weird romance thing going on uh-huh. between them because he's helping because he's like well i don't want to hurt people i just want to be a getaway driver yeah and then of course because that story is where it is they clearly took it away from spencer and that's of one course. of the many storylines that goes fucking nowhere at the yeah end of that. invented in 2007 uh part of the brand new day initiative of uh, as i as i think uh yep. was some of these characters uh, yeah i i'd say i mean i don't care about him but also he had he was used he was used in any way and people seem to like him in spite of me and he keeps uh, coming back i'm gonna say c or d what do you i'll let you be the deciding that's yeah, you know, I would say as a villain, he's more of D tier, but as kind of like a weird anti villain, I would give him a C, but like not everyone uses him that way all the time. He does have staying power, though. He has more staying power than Trapster. He's- they are using him in things, which still boggles my mind. And again, um, he might be in that video game, or maybe I'm thinking of Big Wheel. I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. I mean, I know Big Wheel. He's. <laughs> Big wheel. We're not talking about big wheel. He's got a um, big wheel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a there's an old man that you picked for this one named Dexter Bennett. Yes. Who again? I I felt weird about picking this one because he's really like he doesn't fuck with Spider Man that much, but he is a villain in the Spider Man book because he fucks with JJ in the paper is the thing. He's one of the many people who ah. tries to steal the bugle out from under him. So like a human villain in the Spider Man book fucking with the supporting cast not really spider-man right that's like 
uh, for you old folks out there, you may remember a character named Jonathan Caesar, mm. who was really a Mary Jane villain. He was a he was a, a rich douchebag who was obsessed with Mary Jane from her uh, soap operas, and mm. so he tried to like, you know, get own her. And if he couldn't own her, he would kill her. Dexter mm. Bennett, similar in that regard. Uh, you know, I, I think that. Uh, Caesar is more interesting than Overdrive, so oh. I can't, I can't, you know. And that's a Mary, and that's a Mary Jane villain. She defeats him. Spider Man doesn't do anything with him. Um, Dexter Bennett, same deal. Uh, I'll say C. Yeah, fair enough. And you know, what? I would even say I am more kind of nostalgic for right. these type of villains because the supporting cast in Spider Man books, in most superhero books now, they don't get sweet dick all to do. No, and I feel books are weaker than that because it's like, yeah, I don't think these hero characters were ever meant to hold up the entire book all the time. What what is the supporting cast doing? It's good to see the non powered characters have something to do. It makes the world feel more real and lived in. Uh, Gail Simone of all people went on a great little Twitter thread talking about this, saying, you know, books aren't like this anymore. Why is that? And I'm like, yeah, Gail, that's a really good question. Why don't the supporting cast get anything to do anymore? No, it's true. It's really frustrating, especially when you have like a a, a, a beloved uh, cast like mm-hmm. Spider-Man's. Absolutely. Uh, where, where you could dedicate like a three issue arc to Robbie. And they do sometimes. And they do. Yeah. Um, here's a character I want to just want to get off the list as soon as humanly possible <laughs> because I just I, I have no regard for them in it. It was such a weird decision to mess with this character in any way. I, I feel like it was kind of almost mean spirited, and I think it was done by Dan Slott himself, and that was Monster. Ah, uh, yes. Carly Cooper. Yes, this was during, uh, what is it, the Superior Era. Let's yes. turn Carly into a monster because everyone gets to be a goblin at least one time. Right? Um, I feel like this sucks, uh, but I do feel bad for her. Like, it doesn't suck because I think it's an intellectually, I mean, it is a creatively bankrupt concept because it's like, I don't know what else to do with this supporting character. Uh, character. Either they're going to go to Europe or they're going to turn into a goblin. That's usually how good. Did she even fucking do anything? I, do, I remember this no. image, the one you showed of her becoming monster. Did yeah. she fight Superior Spider-Man? Did anything happen? Oh. Did she have powers or gimmicks or anything? She went away and then came back and like had scarring for oh. a while. Oh. Well, yeah. That was a waste. I agree. Yeah, that does yeah. seem a little mean, mean spirited. We turned her for no reason and then did nothing with it. Yeah, well, I mean, nobody wanted it. You know, nobody thought that was an idea. Um, Carly Cooper is not an F tier character, but that was an F tier decision to do it. Very after. much. And also, why would Ock, who was Spider Man at the time, give a shit? Right. It's like, I well, don't well, know and, you. Uh... And why would we, as the reader, you know, if you went out of your way to get her out of the book? Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's weird. Um, really quick, let's just jump into a couple of super chats because of. A few yes. people have have some pretty uh, some pretty great opinions here. Grumpy Goat, as someone who stopped actively reading Spider-Man comics after Superior, I'm ready to learn which new <laughs> villains have stories worth pursuing. You, you'll be surprised. Yeah, so far so good. So far you're good. You know you have zero pickups to make. Yep. Uh, Ray Far, comic pop. Woo. As somebody with a limited knowledge of new Spidey, I think the short-lived Rhino Two, Rhino with an axe, was pretty cool. Oh God, I don't even remember Rhino Two. Was that not a remember thing? Rhino Two? No, I don't remember that. There was one. a second Rhino with that. Again, so this is our job. We're supposed to know these kinds of I things. I know. Apparently, Rhino Two. Yeah, he was. Uh, has no other alias. Uh, he. Oh yeah. Uh, he, wa- he wants to kill the original Rhino. Uh, he was invented sometime. I just see him on like the list. I don't see like. Yeah, he found and attacked Alexi, uh, but it ended up murdering his wife. Oh, it's the guy who killed his wife. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, which has always been a big driving force for Rhino and everything. Yeah. Uh, also, I know they're not, but new, new, uh, but I think Scorpia and Beetle 2 are neat. Oh, just FYI, screw Red Goblin. I'm <laughs> carnaged out, though, fart. Uh, yeah, man, no, Scorpina is, uh, and Beetle 2 are definitely on this list. Scorpina was one of those things where I was like, what? And that was like, she... Scorpina from the uh, I want to say she was invented during the Black Cat Spider-Man story. Mm, um, we didn't even have a name right. back then. Elaine Cole uh, invented Good design. 19... Uh, yeah, uh, apparently she was. In... Nope, she was invented in 1994. See, I knew she had to be older than that. That's why I didn't put her on this list. Yeah, yeah, 94. Uh, not really used to any effect. Not Another terribly sinister syndicate member. Yep. Uh, yeah. Part of the part of the female team of bad guys led by the Beetle. Um, 
I'll say until recently, she was getting a much better shake of the stick than Matt Gargan was. It feels like a bit there. No one wanted to use Matt Gargan for anything, that there was a huge stink on him. Now that's kind of changing. He actually looks to be a central character in Carnage Reigns, of all things. There you go. Exactly. Yo, if sometimes, if you if you create, that, that's, the, that's what most of these creators are all banking on, is if you, you create a character, one day they may get their time in the sun. Uh, Scorpia is one of them. Yeah, she's not bad. I, I like her suit. I like her general gimmick. She has an interesting voice to her. Beetle 2. I'm actually really glad you brought a Beetle 2 because don't yeah. put Beetle 2 in there. No, that's true. Beetle 2, uh, we can talk about her really quick because she's the leader of the Sinister Syndicate. She's, of course, Tombstone's daughter. Uh, she has a lot going on. Yeah. Um, well, actually, I think uh, I think Lady Auk is the leader of the syndicate, but she's definitely a high rank. Oh, is she she's... really? I thought she was the leader. That's funny. Lady no, Auk, she's... by the way, also invented in like 94. Yes. Not part of this character. Not and part also, of this list. Yeah. And, and also, she didn't look like that Lady Auk when she debuted <sighs> as a Ben villain. This is her looking like her much more popular movie counterpart. And I cannot tell you how many people are like, oh, did they canonize Liv from the movie? No, they did not. No, they did not. No, this is <coughs> no. This is uh, Dr. Seward Trainer's daughter, I believe. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no, she was a fun character that they never really gave any effect to. But Beetle 2, obviously. Uh, Janice Lincoln. Yeah, she's great. Uh, Wonderful. Fun char- she's She has a personality. The thing I like about her, even though I don't have like a favorite story with her in it, she has a personality. And when she shows up, it contributes to the story. A story can yeah. revolve around her. She works as a character. She's oh. always fun when she shows up. She's a lawyer, which is interesting as a villain because her yes. dad's like, no, 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 don't break legs. Be a professional criminal. Be a lawyer. <laughs> exactly. Uh, by the way, Rhino 2, I'm going to say F tier because we couldn't even remember who the hell that character was. I don't think that character has a name even. So that's completely derivative. Uh, Scorpia, I'm going to, uh, she was 94. She doesn't even count. We're not going to rank her. Yeah. Um, and Beetle 2, I'm going to say B. See, I, I would even go further to say in A, because I think she's been in better stories than a lot mm. of these other characters, superior foes for a long period of time. She's a huge fixture in that when yep. she debuts, has kept coming back over the years in really, really good bits there. Even in the Spencer years, she was a huge, uh, you know, wheel, uh, what with her dating uh, Robbie's son and everything. We're probably going to get a fucking wedding issue with her soon. We enough. are. Yeah, definitely. My question is, though, like, is she a Spider-Man villain at this point? Has she really oh, even man. fought Spider-Man? Except for, like, maybe in the Spencer run a little bit? Oh, man. You know what? Fair enough. Yeah, she's been more of a solo character doing her thing. She's helped Peter more times than she hasn't, yeah. honestly. Or as many times if you want to break. You know what? B is fair. You're right. Because, yeah, she's barely even a villain. Yeah, I would like to see her fight Spider-Man. That would be interesting. The fact that I even care about that character at all uh, puts her on the list uh, uh, strongly. Here's a character that I was like, what? Every time I would check in with this, I'd go, <laughs> what are you what are you doing? Like, whose who's fetish are we checking off? <laughs> whose idea is this? None of this works for me. And that, of course, is Menace. Ah, uh, Menace. Lily <laughs> Hollister, who was, of course, invented back in, like, I think, 90, or 2007. D- brand new day. Yep, another, another girlfriend that we goblinized because reasons. Well, because we didn't. We, I don't know if they always planned on making her into that, but I know they couldn't care less about her and... They were like, just just make her a make her a thing. They, her she a definitely thing. had a big uh like uh what is it, a big rollout when it happened. They're like, hey everyone, we're doing a new goblin. We haven't I done a new goblin in a bit. Vividly remember how how strong they felt about this character. They were like Push her hard. Yeah, new new goblin. They were very proud of this. Uh total waste, but like left I very little impact. Little impact. I don't I don't know if I've ever even read her I, I i've never seen her fight spider-man no hmm i'd say d i, was, I, was I remember say, yeah, who, her who did she fight again i, I remember harry the, she that's had, right. i assume she fought the american son but she certainly fought uh norman yeah i, I remember the images i do not remember the story no she might have shown up in new ways to die maybe it's rough. <laughs> see, see, again, sucks. this this is the problem with doing this. When we did the Batman episode, we could at least remember what these characters did. But so many of these Spider-Man villains, it's like, I kind of remember this. Yeah, no. Did that happen? It, did I dream if we're, Menace? Yeah, especially if we're only if we're looking back like 20 years of, of forgettable, of, of new characters. There is a consistency of notice, by the way, lately, ladies and gentlemen, where it's like, not, not very strong outings. 
especially with the brand new day uh, characters where it's like you can't use any of the old characters. You have to invent a new one. They mm. have to be part of the story and good luck with it. Okay, um, okay, here I'm looking at an image right now and it is Menace choking Spider-Man. Okay, so she did fight him at one They did point. fight. Oh no, they fought. They fought. <laughs> it's just that but like to, to, if you if you were to remind Spider-Man of her, would he remember her? Uh Mickey Veach says, uh, not modern, but making Prowler Miles' uncle was a genius and quickly became the default version of the character. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it's more like giving Miles the Prowler identity was their idea. Because, of course, Ultimate Miles, or yeah, Ultimate Miles had Prowler as his uncle. It was always him. It was always Aaron Davis. But uh, then when they fused the universes, they kind kind of hurt Hobie a little bit. Yeah. Kind of screwed up Hobie Brown's. Oh my uh, God. That's right. Yeah. Clone can speak. Yeah. Cause Hobie was Prowler again. And then they, he died and then he got brought back as a clone sleeper agent. And he had like a three issue mini. Oh my God. I don't think they ever yeah. resolved that. Did they? Oh no. I doubt it. And if they did, it was very unfulfilling. Hey, Hey, Cody Ziegler, you're kicking ass right now in that book. And Aaron is <laughs> gone again. Let's have Hobie come into the miles book and let's have them have a conversation about how Miles's existence kind of fucked up his life. Yeah, I would love to see that. I'd love to see Hobie versus Miles for like your uncle's ruining everything. Yeah, I, I'm not even me anymore. Yeah. Stuart Flowers, how do you feel about Rhino being the antagonist in the Craven movie? Couldn't care less. Sure. I'm not seeing that movie for opening day or ever uh, in the theater. Yeah, uh, likewise, do whatever the fuck you want. I, I yeah. like too. They're making a big deal about like it's going to be the first R rated Spider Man. Oh yeah, because that'll that'll definitely help you. That was the problem with Morbius is that yes. it wasn't R rated. You know, kids, we've decided that kids love violence is what we've decided. They really want an R rated Craven movie. Their favorite hero, Craven. Right. He can Never finally mind. hang Dong and say the fuck word and shoot himself in the head at the end. <laughs> Never mind the fact that like. Every Sony individual villain movie was definitely shot as an R rated movie, and, and then they chickened down. out and cut it down. Yep. Uh, Meta Knight says Morlon, uh, best story was his debut story. They have been trying to recapture that debut magic for ages and have been unsuccessful, kind of like Bane. Yeah, yeah, but, I'd but say unlike Morlon ba- is like Bane, but but, but unlike, Bane, they haven't made him an introspective comedy character yet. <laughs> Bane's a better character than Morlon, yes. Uh, Nick Del Tufo, let's not forget Spidey's biggest nemesis, editorial mandates. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, Brian Lewis, 97. Thank you for your very uh, for your generosity. I'm going to have to catch the rewatch. That being said, Morlun spiraled into something overly complicated and distinctly not Spider-Man. Mm. His first appearance did a magnificent job in elevating Peter and showing his indomitable spirit beautifully. Yes, the best villains uh, reflect simple. the... Yeah, they, they are a symbol, or at least they, they force the hero to uh, be better. Mm. Uh, Morlun did that for a little while until he wouldn't go away. Yeah, there so is I definitely something agree. to be said about overcomplicating characters. And yeah, Morlon is a good example of, you know, sometimes less is more. Sometimes yes. having an air of mystery is better. <laughs> Young Goku over 9,000. Hey, guys, got to watch the rewatch, but y'all are dope, and I hope your worlds are going well. Oh, thank you very much, thank man. You. Uh, thanks for your generosity and for your yeah, kindness. Yeah. Cat uh, Lair will defend for treats. Someone at Sony is watching with this <laughs> pen and paper. No We're going to make movies out of all of these. I'm oh, sorry, how many ends does Menace have? Uh, actually, hey, you know, we're in the middle of a writer's strike right now, and I've had many writers I follow on Twitter being like, hey, don't do pitch sessions, <laughs> internet people, because, yeah, the studios are watching, and, yes, they are <laughs> going to take your ideas for free. Yeah. Uh, C-Top, 1106, Spider-Man's biggest villain is, and always will be, Life, featuring <laughs> known henchman Bill Payments. Heartbreak. <laughs> Love Bill Payments. That's a fun that's, character. That's pretty solid, actually. I like that. And Heartbreak. Yeah. How does Spider-Man not have a villain called Heartbreaker? Oh, well, now he will. Congratulations. <laughs> C-Top 1106. The Captain Coon jackpot isn't a villain, but she is a Z anyway. She's a Z-lister. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I would like, I, I actually, I would go so far as to be like, let's do a time travel story and unmake that completely. Because it's just, <laughs> it shouldn't even exist. This guy, 9947, I always felt that Miles should be fighting villains his age, like Bombshell, Screwball, Anna Kravenoff, Alpha, mm. Komodo from Avengers Initiative. That'd be fun. Yeah, I guess that'd be cool. But then it's like, it feels like he's kind of like a junior Spider-Man. Yeah, which I don't think they want to. Miles is interesting because he's had way less new villains than you would think think but i would say by and large a lot of the new villains he's had have been pretty solid the rabble that they just finished in the ziggler story was great and quintessentially classic spider-man a genius kid who got screwed over by life and took it out on spider-man as like an avatar for everything wrong i'm like oh that's such a great throwback even the assessor which i don't know how they ended the assessor storyline but i thought he was wonderfully creepy and alien and otherworldly yeah yeah. Um, 
real quick, I want to mention this character because it's on the list and uh, it'd be fun. Is Paper Doll? Ah, yes, Paper Doll. Well, only had one story under her belt, but is interesting in as much as her entire villainous motivation was not connected to Spider-Man. She was just no. a creepy stalker that Spider-Man had to stop. And I feel we don't get a lot of those villains anymore. My motivation is completely unrelated to you, Spider-Man. Every right. villain now feels like, oh, I need to break Spider-Man. I'm so pissed at Spider-Man. Yeah, which is, uh, there, there's a consistency there. I mean, certainly that's chasing the Venom brass ring, but like, mm. I, I love the villains that are like, I don't want to have anything. To, like Spider-Man gets involved because he's a deeply personal person and he's, he's yeah. a personal character. And these characters are like, I just needed these powers to get this one thing that has nothing to do with who you are. And you keep getting involved. Why are you involved? I don't even know you. And then it's like, that's how you get a good villain out of that. And also, which makes it personal after a fact where it's like, why does Spider-Man keep me away from the one thing I want? Exactly. Uh, Paper <coughs> Doll, by the way, debuted 2008. Um, again, very rarely used, if ever. I think like, only the one story. Yeah, the last time we saw her was Amazing Spider-Man number 561. Mm. So, it's geez. been a hot minute. Yeah, uh, but neat character. and Creepy has, design. Has potential. So I'm going to say C tier. Yeah, because if they brought Paper Doll back tomorrow for any reason, I'd be like, oh, there's stuff here to do. And creepy power set, you know, something keeps Spider-Man on their toes. Yeah, more so than uh, that that God thing that you also wanted to mention. I think it's Dr. Rabin. Yes, Dr. Rabin, who he's fighting currently, the weird mathematician turned supervillain obsessed with Mayan blood gods. <laughs> yep, yeah. Uh, yeah, this this is uh this is pathetic because no one used Rabin or his god thing. Mm-hmm since Zeb Wells, Zeb Wells created invented him. it in 2008. Yep. <laughs> Which, so on, like... on one hand, I'm like, you know what? Good on you for using an old villain because people would have crucified you if you invented someone new, new to explain this. Yeah. But also, people were mad at you anyway, being like, oh, Zeb Wells is just trying to up the value of books that he wrote so he can sell them out of the trunk of his car. And I'm like, I don't think he's doing that, but okay. No, not when he's got, like, Marvel's Cinematic Universe money or the fact that he, like, wrote for Adult Swim in some yeah. of your favorite sketches or his Hellions run, which was canceled but still ran for a lot longer. And uh, got to run or got to end. <clears throat> got to end. Uh, yeah, this Rabin thing is, is just... I, I, I Okay, so obviously since no one picked up a baton and he picked it up himself and had Spider-Man one-punch him and then move yep. on forever, yep. I'd say F-tier, but like... Only because of the uh, because we like we live in the future, we know that we never went anywhere. <laughs> yeah, but I I feel bad because when he was originally created, he was drawn by Chris Bocciolo, and it looks awesome. Yeah, it's a really cool looking. But yeah, Wolverine's in that book too. It's a whole yeah. thing. Rabbit. It's also person. frustrating because this is one of the best John Romita Jr. covers in a Spider Man book in a long time too. So he, he looks cool, but you know, I and I honestly, I've read the book uh, uh, and also, I read that's, his. That's not Rabbit on the cover. That's no, the that's his God. Yeah, that's yeah, the that's <laughs> Wait, which I we I'm gonna lump them together because they're connected. They, they're basically the same thing. They fucking are. And I don't care about either of them. I'm not interested. And I've seen I've read both issues, his you know his issue, his appearance, and then him being used in this. I still have no freaking idea what the hell he's doing. I, I'm like, what is math. this? Something right? about fucking math. Okay, math and sun god. And I'm like, I, you lost me. And this, uh, for that, this, I, this I, is I a perfect do example. F. Of, of if Morlun is the good end of Spider-Man dealing with yes. magical enemies, this is the wrong opposite end of Spider-Man dealing with magic. Yeah, enemies. this is being this is this is the thing. This is the slippery slope people were warning about when Spider-Man started getting mystical <laughs> in 2001. People were like, no, he's going to start. They're going to make all kinds of stupid gods. And it's like, <laughs> hey, they did it one time. Yep. And uh, he, and nobody used it. And then the creator used it again as a jobber to get to an editorially mandated decision about a human being. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, that, that, that is so close to just being an original character that lives in your own book. So who cares? Kinda. Goodbye. F go away. <laughs> we'll, go away. Why and Raven. Oh, we'll, um, we'll remember Dr. Raven though, only because yeah, for all the wrong reasons. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No one has any um, fondness for this character. Yeah. Uh, also created in 2009. I guess we could talk about Jimmy Natalie or Jimmy Natal. 
Yes. Uh, AKA I, the red vulture. I, I think it is Natal because it's supposed to be like fatal. Oh, yes. Okay. The, the red vulture, uh, a mafia hitman cleaner who becomes a new vulture. The big change this time around is that he actually does stuff that vultures do. Like he can, <laughs> vo- he can vomit up acid, which is what yes. vultures really do to eat dead bodies. And because he's a hitman who makes bodies disappear, that's his thing. <laughs> This is so boring and uninteresting to me. It's just, again, it's just, you're just a worst version of Vulture. You're a worst version of Vulture. And Vulture is a octogenarian in a, in a bird costume. And they struggle to do things with Vulture. You didn't have a chance. Right. I, you, you should have just been a character who stole his, uh, his energy vampire suit oh, yeah. and just been another vulture instead of being the red vulture. I, I can, they're like, but we need to do a new thing. We can't just make him a derivative of vulture. We need to make it look like we did a little work. Yeah, and they did. They did a little work. This is very lame, but it's not as lame as the inheritor. So I give him a D. That's fine. You know, red vulture is totally indicative of villains of that time, where it's like we need to do just enough work. <laughs> To justify not just making him Vulture 2 or Vulture 3. Exactly. Uh, we got to talk about Massacre. Uh, uh, because yes. that's another character that, like, I never really responded to. And had a longer run than you think. And I have yes. to, I, I almost got to take my hat off to uh, Slot, knowing how Massacre's story ended. Where it's like, were, were you working up to Superior? Did you know you were going there and knew that right? Spider-Man would have to kill someone and make a big deal out of it? So you created a villain who was like truly, you know, un uh, irredeemable. Yeah. Irredeemable. And just a total asshole piece of shit. Cause like most of slots characters, most of slots villains are not like this, that they're this like hateful and murderous and just like the absolute worst. And it makes me think that slot was actually planning like three moves ahead with this guy. Yeah. Knowing that he would be killed and has yet to be resurrected since. And good because he's a terrible design and a, and, and and a one note concept, but I kill people. Yeah. Yeah, I kill people and I don't I'm a Bond villain with more shit on me yeah uh, by the way 2011 he was created uh, newer. but worked exactly the way you want he's he's a scumbag Spider-Man develops that bulletproof suit to fight him mm-hmm. uh, in the first place Superior kills him and you you learn like because he also is like he he is so frightened by Superior Spider-Man that he mm-hmm. feels again Yes. So it proves time. like it it proves Peter's theory that people can be redeemed. Yeah. And yeah, then he dies that anyway. Way. Yeah. That's great. He, That's he great. Ser- he served his point in the story. Yes. And like again, Slot seems like he actually thought about that and worked that out and paid it off to where I'm like, I can't say Massacre is the worst because of that, because he actually no. did what he was supposed to do. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'd ever want to see him again. Probably not. But I would say based on just the story strength alone and the fact that he's not he's he's a little complicated. He's got like the thing and the yeah. th- stuff. But like so C, maybe B minus. I'd say again, maybe. B minus, I agree with. And again, if they brought him into a video game, I think he'd make a great video game boss, actually. Yeah. Yeah. He keeps okay shooting at you. Yeah, he keeps shooting at you. You can't hurt him. You gotta like slink around in the dark and sneak up on him. Here's the thing. If he I'll say B. But if he's resurrected, I'll bring him back down to a D because then that un- it unmakes the story. It unmakes the character. It just it unmakes the agree. whole purpose of him even existing. You know what you should do with him? If you ever did bring him back, you don't bring him back as a Peter villain. You bring him back as an Ock villain is what yes. it is. Because you're very the one okay. who killed me. Right? Um, nobody really likes this uh, this turn for Ben Riley when he was the Jackal. <laughs> uh, remember when everyone thought he was Mephisto for a hot second and everyone was really excited because, oh, he's got the God of the Dead yeah. mask there and a red suit and everything. I remember we were doing weekly poll at the time and I jokingly said, <laughs> it's going to be funny when it finds out it's when we find out he's Ben, you're all going to feel really stupid. And then he was, and I was right. right. I was mad I was right. Yeah. 2016, uh, <sighs> This did not last. Nobody liked it. Nope. It wasn't like it was a cool status quo. It just, it just was a, it was more like an affectation that Ben put on so that he could do that. Was connected was, to a bad story. <laughs> yep. It's, it's not great. Uh, I, 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 I don't even want to rank it because I don't even think he's really a villain. It's just, some, it's just a weird phase that Ben went through. One I was going to say, he's definitely a villain for that story. And even before he that, because he was going around recruiting other villains, making devil's deals. I would say he was. And even after that, 
he was still a piece of shit after he defeated yeah. him and slinked away. And he was like an anti-hero, anti-villain oh, God. for a while after that, living in Vegas, like your yep. weird uncle who turned 50 <laughs> and then just moved to Las Vegas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I'd say D it's, it's, it's not as a, it, I guess if you're a Ben Riley fan, I'd may, maybe people would be like F. So yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'll defer hey. to the population, but I'll say D for now. But if everybody else disagrees, I'm happy to go F. You know what, man? I, I will agree with D, because as bad as this villainous turn is, at least thematically it made sense connected to clones and the jackal yes. and everything else. This Resurrection. Was like his, yeah, this was like his own Jason Todd becomes Red Hood moment yeah. there. I've become the thing that I hate more than anything in the world. I, yeah. But it can get so much worse and it will. <laughs> yeah, no. I, and I, I think if he were to put on like a green jackal suit, <laughs> that would have been more disappointing. So I'm glad he like became a different kind of jackal. Like it was it was a great idea and he doesn't look terrible. It's just like, no. oh, okay. It's a neat, I'm idea. Anubis. It's a neat idea. I'm the god of death Anubis. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, Clash. Ah, uh, Clash. Dan Slots. Interesting. Like this was a character who I think was like in an annual and then came back for a series of tie-in issues. Basically... He's a cracked mirror, Peter Parker. He's another really yeah. smart guy who was dealt a bad hand in life. Uh, he's, yep. a, he's a sound engineer. Instead of becoming a hero, though, he became a selfish villain. Yep. Peter teaches him a lesson. And then when Peter has a company, he hires him and he works for him. Yep. 2014. So almost 10 years old. Yeah. Uh, he's only a villain in his first appearance. And then his second appearance is interesting because it was in Civil War II, when mm -hmm. him and Harry kind of have a weird like dick measuring thing with Harry being like, oh, he's a he's a criminal, Peter. You can't have him work for your company. He's a You're criminal. A goblin. Exactly. And that's the whole point of the story where Peter's like, if anyone should be forgiving, it should be you, Harry. And because Harry keeps riding this dude's ass, he yeah. ends up reoffending because it's really a story about parole. And, you know, yes. if you tr keep treating people like criminals, of course, they're going to reoffend. Slot was saying something with that in an era mm -hmm. when he wasn't really saying anything, and it was in a series of tie-ins that no one gave a fuck about. Uh huh. That's right. Yeah. He. I like the suit. I. Yeah. I like the fact that he is like he does reflect the hero. Um. But never. They never did anything with him that was no. worthwhile. But that doesn't mean there isn't any any potential for him. I'm gonna say C because yeah. the the costume helps a bit. It does, and, like, there's enough there. Like, if he showed up tomorrow in any meaningful way, like, you could put him on the Thunderballs. You could put him on any team yeah. as a guy, and I'd be like, oh, that's fun. You dug him up again. Yeah. There's stuff there to go for. If you gave him to, like, Jed McKay or Demetrius, they would do a dynamite story with that character. If you gave him to Hellion Zeb Wells, he could do something with them. <laughs> oh, my God. I would rather you didn't. Uh, this character's fun. I'm glad you remembered him, which was uh, the was was Raptor. Yeah, Raptor. Damon Ryder. Uh, yeah, D created Ryder. just created back when they were when they were sure they would never bring Ben Riley back. Yeah, that. exactly. This whole character is basically a joke about I'm here to fight you, Spider Man. No, the other Spider Man, Ben Riley. What do you mean yeah. he's dead? Yeah. Oh, well, then what the hell am I doing here for? I feel like an idiot. Also invented specifically to look like a character invented in the '90s. Oh yeah. Um, actually invented in 2009 so they're very at this point marvel is very much aware of what happened in the 90s and they're trying <laughs> to apologize for it and uh this feels it felt a little obvious but also it's supposed to be yes because he's another joke character marvel has never shied away from having a character that exists solely as a punchline <laughs> yeah uh they never really uh, did anything with him and then kane murdered him ah there you go so you know, I don't really care. I'd say D because sure. you could always make a neat. Uh, we could always use more dinosaurs. It's a it's a funny joke. <laughs> like he yeah. serves his purpose as a joke. He was never supposed to be threatening. He was never supposed to be a huge right. mastermind. He was supposed to make you giggle as a longtime comic reader, and he did. <laughs> if they if they if they argued that he came back in clone conspiracy, no, and then he got together with like cyber. And a couple other like '90s relics that shouldn't have existed, or or, or no one remembers the, the robot and, Wolverine, right? Like, yeah, formed like a whole team of characters that were invented rejects. because it was the '90s. I think I'd be okay with that. <laughs> they call themselves the Spirit of '92. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, Raptor. Otherwise, D. Yeah. It is funny, though, to have a whole villain whose motivation is, again, related to Spider-Man, but not Peter. Right. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. That's why. Yeah, you know what? Maybe I'll say C-. minus. 
Because because we don't get that anymore, right? Like every villain has a bone to pick with Peter yeah. now or Spider Man directly. Right. It, it, I never thought I'd be nostalgic for fucking Raptor, but here I am being like, oh man, those were the days when Spider Man villains had varied motivations. And that's the thing, right? Like Raptor, Raptor's existence isn't offensive like no. some of these other characters. Yes, as um, we'll get to. <laughs> Tevi, of course. What about Paul? Lol. Um, yeah, lol. Yeah, uh, Patrick just Lawson. a guy as far as we know. Just a guy. Uh, so happy to have a Friday with Sal and Joel. Thanks, Patrick. Aww, Great to have you, man. You. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. Um, and uh, and more. Uh, this guy. Speaking of the guys, uh, ninety nine forty seven. Cadaverous. Oh yes. yes, he's on the list. Don't worry, Cadaverous <laughs> is coming. I only remembered him last night, actually, as we were putting this together. I'm like, mm -hmm. no, wait, that J.J. Abrams book had a villain, didn't it? <laughs> yes, it did. Worst name in the world. Uh, sure Captain is. Coon. Problem with Carly Cooper is that she got passed around between five different writers, so nobody really had a chance yeah. to establish her as a character. Yeah, I think Dan Slott did a nice enough job. She, you know, she she's in roller derby, and she's really. Fun. She's she's a fun character and fell way, off the face of the earth in the Spencer run by the Barry and had no no resolution to her story. Did Nick Spencer like go away? Uh, Gotham City critics does Clone Craven count? Nah, it's just Craven. They just want Craven. And, and, and also, Clone Craven never fought Spider Man. He fought like Deadpool and a bunch of other people. Oh no, no wait, that's not true. He fought Ben. He came back and yes. fought Ben in Beyond. And they actually kind of had a fun back and forth of like you know we're we're both clones is the thing you know we're yeah. both fighting to get out of the shadow of these other people. Yeah, there was something in that one story. It's and it true. was a short story, too. It was only like two issues. Yeah, the frustrating thing for me is that it just makes me think of um, the Marvel DC crossover when they were like, oh, Superboy has to fight Spider-Man mm. because they're both clones, you see. And I'm like, oh, no, that's not enough. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, really quick, we should talk about the Queen because yes. she's a character um, that was created. And it was like, what? And then they yep. were like, it's funny because she's she's Spider-Man villain. And they were they retconned her into being Actually, she's a Captain America villain. Yeah. Uh, first appeared in Spectacular 15 in 2004. So still newer than Morlun. Uh, yes. And also a big Spider-Man event villain who is an original character, which we don't get yes. very many of, many of recently. No, I don't. Okay. So I look at the queen the same way I look at the Borg queen, mm -hmm. where I like the Borg queen but I don't care about the Borg. Queen. You know, like, I, I like, <laughs> I like first contact enough, but I also, but if you were to, if you were to press me, a Borg queen idea is stupid. And so too is this character, but <laughs> she's fun to be crappy. And you know, she's, there needs to be a character, especially in a, in a book like Spider Island, which is one yeah. of my favorite Spider-Man events of all time. Which it's is pretty like, solid. Like, where she's just a hand wringing, I'm going to do this. And I'm like, all right, you know what? Let's make you a C villain. Cause like, yeah, not, not every, not every villain needs to be deeper nuanced. No, whenever this, and, 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 and she's a, she's an excuse for Spidey and cap the team up sometimes. Also that. And again, Hey, if you put her in the next Spider-Man video game, if she was the villain and we do a take on spider Island, right. And that's the thing I'd be like, you know what? All right. I bet that'd be a good boss battle. She's, she is a good boss battle character. I'm very okay with that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, let's let's make her. I'd say B. Yeah, sure. We'll throw in B because again, she's, hey, original Spider-Man event right? villain. Exactly. She's got to get points just for that because so many other Spider-Man villain events are based around characters you already know. Exactly. Uh, speaking of characters who are derivatives, and of course, speaking of Craven, we should talk about Anastasia Cravenov. Ah, uh, yes. Who they tried to recruit for the Sinister Syndicate, and she's like, no. Or or, or or did they not want her? I think they didn't want her. They're like, no. well, do we really need another Craven derivative. So even Nick Spencer's like, look, I love me some lame D list characters. Even I don't yeah. love her. No. Uh, by the way, uh, she also goes by Thundercat. Does she fucking <laughs> seriously? <laughs> Apparently, uh, in, if you check Spider Girl number four, uh, she also appears in that book, <laughs> and uh, she fights Anya or Aranya, and she goes by Thundercat. Um, <laughs> So created in 2008, uh, just, you know, evil secret daughter by Craven. Yeah. All right. It's been done. Yeah. See, I don't care. Oh. It's just forgettable. Don't, oh. doesn't matter. I'm not oh, interested. Oh, oh, all of Craven's kids are just so disappointing. 
I don't even. Uh, she's the only one that that we're even going to bother talking about. Yeah, just, you know, and I, I say and the others, <laughs> right? Like between D and C, she's who cares? Like she that she's never done anything interesting. But but and, also because she's not done anything interesting, I also don't think she's completely unsalvageable. Again, right? Maybe not as a Spider Man film. Maybe if she stayed like a Spider Gwen villain or something, yes. that would actually be a good place for her. Well, and hey, listen, like she had, uh, she was scary, and or at the very least, like she was, she she had her own character during Grim Hunt, which yeah. people really love. So it's like if you just reference Grim Hunt and then do something interesting and new with her next, uh, people will forget all the nonsense I, between those two. I mean, periods. shit, even she could show up in the new Miles book, and I'd be like, oh, that's interesting because Miles is going to be fighting the Hobgoblin next. Yeah, no, be I, and it's also going to be original Hobgoblin because the OG one came back. So I'm like, oh, that's fun. He's never fought him before. Yeah, if you if you like spit polish a couple of Spider Man's vo- foes that are useless and just throw them to Miles. Miles could elevate them in some which, way. Which they are. Scorpion is being elevated super hard yeah. right now just by hanging out with Miles. Yeah. Uh, Stupid Sandwich says, I'm just catching the early part of the stream now, and I'm wondering, if the, is the character named Overdrive or Override? I thought the whole gimmick was that he could override electronics. No. Oh. Overdrive, he drives very well. But, but he does override electronics, so he technically does both things at once. That's true. So if here's the thing. If he, ever look, if he, if he is looking for a, you know, a, a rebrand, he could go by override it's, because I don't think there's anybody that like, named that either. It's it's a whole shocker pro- problem, like in the cartoon. Like no, in the cartoon he definitely does electricity, but everywhere else he's <laughs> you know he's doing shock waves, not electricity shocks. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, Sean D says, "Love you guys." Feels like I haven't seen y'all live in ages. Well, uh, it's been it. it's been a little while. I'm glad you're here. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, Landon C liked Mr. Negative a lot in the video game. While his powers are a bit abstract, a straightforward character gimmick makes for classic stories. I'd say it makes for the classic story you saw in the video game, but I'd say, yeah, that's probably true. Well, we'll talk about him in a little while, though. Yeah, again, I, I have thoughts about Mr. Negative. Yes, uh, Ray Farr, Ultimate Molten Man, great character. Why a band? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. He's not even a villain. Uh, metal, that's just, why. Just, yeah, that's right, because it's metal. Uh, I, I cry during sex. Nicely done. Says, <laughs> Are we going to see Ultimate Spider-Man on back issue soon? Nope. And uh, the Space Cowboy. Hope my favorite comic tubers are doing well. Thank you very much. Let me know who they are. Uh, How do you guys feel about Miguel O'Hara coming back for some stories? Miss me some 2099. I feel like it's okay to let him cool off. He was seemingly everywhere for a while. Like, he had his own ongoing series in the main universe. And I was like, get out of here. Yeah, and Comic Book Girl 19 was his landlord. (laughs) <laughs> is that true <laughs> yeah don't you remember that there was a lady there his landlord was so undeniably just comic book girl 19 i did not notice that that's what oh we, we joked about it back in the oh, day there you go. it was oh. new we're like oh fuck off that can't be true yeah i mean i guess they got to put miguel o'hare and stuff because he's going to be in the new movie so they want to try and warm him up and also i, I think yes. he's fighting carnage now in his new book because it's part of the whole bigger summer of symbiotes thing so they can yeah. kill two birds with one stone yeah yeah um that makes sense because she was like working for Marvel at the time. Ah, right? checks out. She was there. She was going to be their 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 new host of their of their award winning show, Off the Rack. <laughs> Meta Knight says only good thing about Jackal Ben is how dope he looks in that suit. That's what I'm saying. It's a good suit. <laughs> It's a good suit. Axe, thanks for the super sticker. I'll uh, check that out on the repeat. I apologize. This thing does not allow me to look at fun super stickers. Nikki T, hate to break it to you, Sal. Massacre did come back in Clone Conspiracy, and then they just forgot. Oh, shit, alive. that's right. He there did. you go. There you but go. But no one's used him since, though, so he might as well be dead. <laughs> yeah, then, all right, he's a D. Uh, Captain Coon, Ben's Jackal outfit, S tier. Ben is Jackal, is an F. There you <laughs> Fair go. So how do you, enough. If you average that together, you get like a D. So, <laughs> hey, they, they should give that costume to someone else if it's so good. <laughs> right? I would say Mephisto. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Stupid sandwich. The Ben Riley that was resurrected in 08 is not my Ben. No way, no how. As far as I'm concerned, he's still dust. Mm. I mean, I'm okay with that. Uh, comic dog, not Spidey related, but whatever happened with Snowflake and Safe Space, they uh, never appeared. They Books not- never came mm-hmm. out, which is a yeah. shame because that means there's a huge chunk of that storyline that goes completely unresolved. And that is why, what, 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 why did these new warriors choose to work for the government and turn bad and start working for right. this, you know, evil child catcher group. We'll never know because the story never came out. Yeah, never happened. 
Uh, also a shame too, because again, it's one of those things where now you'll never know. Wait, was that a joke on people or like a joke with people? I can't tell anymore. I, I think you know. I think I think it was meant in earnest, and that's why it disappeared. Probably they were like, "Oh no, <laughs> you were being earnest. Get out of here." <laughs> yeah, uh, Sean D. Um, left field question, but has Sabretooth ever fought Craven the Hunter? I feel like he or Wolverine would be a cool fight. More so Sabretooth versus Craven. Uh, I'm going to tell my friend who's a huge Craven fan, and he is going to be very excited to hear that idea. I, I don't think say, so. I, I know Craven was in that X Force book during Judgment Day. I don't oh, yeah. know. I don't know what became of that. I kind of stopped reading the book around that time. <laughs> Not because I didn't like it, just because I had too much to handle with Judgment Day. I couldn't take another ongoing series. <laughs> no, that's fair. Here's a fun character because they look insane, and it's Freak from 2008. Yeah. Uh, he is also called the Armadillo Man. <laughs> And I think, yeah, that that's that's apt. Um, yeah, what's the deal with Freak? A am I confusing him with Digger, who's the mobster who got like <laughs> Digger is the by chemicals? Digger is the like Hulk uh, composite mobster. Right. Did we talk yeah. about? We didn't talk about Digger. No, but uh, they brought Digger back just recently, didn't they? Yeah. Okay. I Freak was a drug addict who was trying to, you know, steal from Aunt May's soup kitchen. And then he stumbled into one of Kurt Connor's laboratory and injected himself with a bunch of goo yeah. because uh, I think he thought it was crystal meth, but it just turned him into this. Yeah. I, I don't know anything about Freak. Uh, he just looks insane in this one picture. Um, I don't, I think that based, based solely on the fact that like, it's, you know, it, oh no, it's a drug thing. Um, I kind of love the idea of bringing him back as a kind of like, especially since nobody cares. Um, I, I just looked him up a little bit, but like uh, if you made him like an unstoppable, just like adrenaline fueled monster mm. that wants to kill and tries to kill Spider-Man and just won't stop. That'd be a cool one off story. I dig it again. Good design. Uh, also, I, I think people's problem with this character is that his story was ultimately too sympathetic where it's like, oh, he's just some poor, sad drug addict who keeps <laughs> fucking up because he is in the vicinity of Spider-Man and all this super science bullshit. If he lived in anywhere but Marvel's New York, he probably would have been fine. Exactly. No, I love it. Uh, so there's, there's a certain tragedy to this character. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say probably C. Just Fair because enough. they've never done anything with him to any significance, but they always could. Um, but since we mentioned him, I guess we could talk about Digger. Yeah, uh, which, which because, we just brought up. Yeah, because Digger is a fun character. I, I really liked Digger when he debuted because I really liked the story. I really liked what JMS said with Digger or There's really talked there, about. Yeah. There was something. OK, so here's the thing. I thought there was something there. And then Zeb Wells brought him back <laughs> as just a hired muscle. And so, no, there isn't. He's a one-off character. He exists in that one JMS story, and that's it. Um, Digger, I think, was created in 2001 as well. So, ah, so again, older than you might think. Yeah, he's like he either predates Morlun or immediately postdates Morlun. But either way, he is uh, not terribly exciting. And the best Digger story was the first and last Digger story. Yeah, um, also more of like a Hulk character with his connection to Gamma and everything yes. there too. Why doesn't he fight the Hulk more? Yeah, uh, and, and also Digger was there, I think, to like set up an inevitable and ultimately abandoned fight between Hulk and Spider-Man that JMS uh, wanted to play with. Uh, At least that's what it suggested in the text. Checks out. Hey, uh, David Popose, who I think is going to be taking over yes. Hulk. I know he's doing an annual that's getting a lot of good buzz. He's doing an him. annual. I don't think he's taking over the whole book. If it sells well, who knows? But hey, maybe he should dig up Digger to be a Hulk yeah. character. Right? I mean, he's alive and they're using yeah. him and stuff. Uh, the Red Goblin... Mm. is one of those rebrands like you talked about again old just, villain in a new hat it's just norman osborne with a carnage symbiote uh i i i dropped and hated mm -hmm. the dan slot run by this point but i will admit need i neat execution it was silly and it dumb. was his last story for slot he's like i gotta go out big i gotta do something huge yeah silly and weird but also kind of fun and shocking that it was never done before, where it's like, really, they never put Norman Osborn in a symbiote. Not once, not in all these years. He never, huh? he never saw the appeal. And I was like, fair. Until right now, it. because he's like, ah, you know, I, I wasn't he like old or sick or something? And he like needed an extra edge. And that's why he got all like. No, I uh, think he just needed it. He just wanted it. I think he bought the symbiote and it was just insane. Yeah. 
And of course, he, he turned Normie, his grandson, into Goblin Child. And Normie yes. is the Red Goblin now. And Red Goblin has an ongoing solo series where the whole thrust of it is Normie as a child is unsure. Will he become a villain like all the other men in his family or will he try and do good? Right, exactly. Uh, and it made him into like a scary little like monster in his own right, which is kind of fun. Yeah, like Macaulay um, Culkin in The Good Son. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, that was like... I want to say 798 of Amazing Spider-Man. And I don't remember what year that came out, but it was a couple of them. Not right like near the end. Yeah, it was uh, 2018. Uh, yeah, he, he killed Flash Thompson for a bit. So, you know, if yeah, we're looking did. for people who he killed, you know, if that yes. ups his stake as a villain. Actually, he killed uh, Flash Thompson and he killed Phil Yurick, too. Yes, he did. Yeah, which is a real shame. And, and, and um, they're paying that off now because Yurick is the villain in the new Red Goblin book. That's right. Now, does Phil Yurick as uh, the Red Goblin? Oh, by the way, Red Goblin i don't know i think i think i think based on like reskins uh, video games and other future comic book appearances like people might call him like a b-tier villain i think it's i mean nobody really wanted to see that they wanted to see green no. goblin come back and that's what uh what he wanted to do it's it's almost not fair too because it's like no it's just norman osborne in another hat is all it is and, and the hat is an old hat that is named carnage is what yeah it is. <laughs> um yeah, I, I, I don't know. I'd say like a, I, I'd say C only because it's like there's, it, it, is, is it anything? Is there anything I, I, there? I'll, I'll live with that. We might have to relitigate it later if the new Red Goblin turns into anything better than it is right now. Because it's going places. I, I, I like Red Goblin more as this weird, conflicted little kid hero, honestly. Mm, that's he, fair. Because here's the thing. Normie's Red Goblin suit actually looks different than that and looks different than the one on all of the covers. His suit looks like a Power Ranger. Oh, that's yeah, that's not going to sell. Because he, uh, well, he's a little kid, and that's why they're not putting it on the cover. Because he's like, well, yeah, this is how I feel. I feel like a hero. My suit looks more like Spider-Man, but I have this great darkness inside me. And when he lets the suit take control, then he becomes a monster goblin. Yeah. Um, oh, God. I guess we could talk about this character who made me want to, like, throw up from <laughs> frustration in the spider-man game screwball oh yeah fucking screwball everyone i mean she's meant to be annoying and annoying yes. she is yeah, she 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 nails it uh congratulations on that uh 2008 this is a how do you do fellow kids character and i don't <laughs> care for her because i think she really does exemplify the like i'm a 45 year old man and i know what the kids want this is what they are all like they and love their like, streamings and their youtubes yeah it's <laughs> terrible uh, uh no staying power she does exist she has existed they've used her uh, a bunch she's appeared in the comic book there's she's 36 different issues of comic books she's appeared in as a joke villain, that's the thing too. Man, Spider Man has a lot of fucking joke. Batman didn't have this many joke villains. <laughs> oh, it's true. Yeah, yeah. There's everyone. Everybody talks about Condiment King. Spider Man has like twenty Condiment Kings. Oh my god, I never thought of that. You're right. You're either like a a, a new master planner or you're yeah. a goddamn screwball joke villain. That's right. Uh, lame. Uh, F. Yeah, that's fair. I don't think anyone would fight with that. But you know what? She she would happily take that F and then do a she stream would. about it. Yeah, and then she'd pretend like she wasn't going to cry about it. Uh, <laughs> should we talk about uh, Phil for a little while? Phil Yurick and what yeah, the hell he's doing right now? Well, because he went through a number of changes. He was the newer Hobgoblin. Yep. Then yep. he became Goblin Knight in service to, uh, what is it, the Goblin King Norman Osborn when he was living in the sewers uh -huh. with his cult of people. And then he got to be Goblin King and stayed Goblin King for a while and fought a couple different heroes as Goblin King before yeah. eventually getting killed by Red Goblin, Norman dying, and now he's a zombie. Yeah. Um... I like Phil. I don't know if I've liked any of his runs as all no. of these different villains. It's weird. He's kind of got a Hawkeye thing going on where, like, he's more than the sum of his parts when you yes. put it all together. Because, oh, yeah, he was heroic Green Goblin, too, for a second. Yeah, Holy no, shit. there's a little list. It's like he was Green Goblin, Hobgoblin, Goblin Knight, Goblin King. Goblin I only zombie. liked him. I only liked him in the Spider Girl miniseries or the the, the Spider Girl alternate reality series. And mm. I guess I liked him as the Green Goblin, but I didn't really read that book. 
He's, so he, I guess I didn't care. As a journalist, too, he's also kind of a cracked, mirrored Peter when yeah. he was working at the Beagle because he's like, yeah, I'm using my powers and my costumes to like get chicks and everything and help me pull myself <laughs> up in life and everything. I don't I have the power, but I have none of the responsibility. Yeah, that's true. There's um, there's something about like again, I like Phil. I don't know if I've liked any of his turns as any of these characters. I no. I, I, I do like him as like a as like a continuity thing in Red Goblin, where it's like, hey, you fucking killed me. I'm a zombie now, but I've got so much goblin juice in me, I can't die. That's fair. That's fair. Uh I'd say C. That's because fair. because he's he's always he always he's like a bad penny. He always turns up, they always put him in some kind of goblin thing. But I will say too, I would almost give him a C plus because I'm always happy to see him though. When he does, I'm like, oh hey, someone remembered Phil existed. Exactly. Like, good for you, Phil. Um way to beat the clock every exactly. time. <laughs> exactly. We should probably mention uh Kindred. Ah, uh, yes, Kindred. Y y what was it, like three years worth of stories with this guy? Oh, my God. Okay, so Kindred was nothing. Like, Kindred was nothing interesting, didn't work, and it was a mystery that people were excited about for a hot second. He's he is um, a, he's a terrible design. So yeah. It's a bunch of shit. It was technically multiple people. He was the hairy AI, and he was he the was two Stacy twins. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, I Like... 2018, by the way, created. Um, Mephisto was also involved right? somehow. Yeah, no, Kindred. K Kindred was a failed experiment. Another attempt at doing a master planner chess villain who, you know, controls all of these events from afar and, you know, tries to ruin Spider-Man and destroy him. Yeah. No, this does not work. Um, no, I don't think it I think we can officially say now Kindred, Kindred failed experiment failure. that no one wants to revisit anytime right. soon. It, 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 someone will bring back Kindred and, and, and Kindred will be a costume that like, someone else puts on dead. Former Peter Parker cast members will inhabit like that's mm. what his character will be. Yeah. And that sucks. Yeah. That he has to be this overly complicated looking, ugly, stupid thing. I get, yeah, overly complicated with nothing at the core of it. Once yes. you like cut all the all the bullshit and all the mystery and everything else away, it's like, okay, this this was empty. There was nothing here. Exactly. Uh, this is a disappointment for me in a big way where I was like, I can't believe they finally ruined this character. Like, I was so excited to see her return as a character. Mm -hmm. And then they gobbled her. And that was uh, Ashley Kafka yeah. as, of course, the... Uh, Queen Techn Goblin. Technically, Ashley Kafka's clone. Right. She had she died, died and was resurrected. See, I actually think she works great as a Gold Goblin villain, as a Ben villain. Mm -hmm. I don't think she worked well as a Peter villain because no. she actually had way more tie to those other two, either because she absorbed uh, Norman's sins and became a villain or to Ben because she was actively trying to help him get away yes. from beyond. And, you know, you created me and everything, but, you know, I want to forgive you because you actively seem to be moving away from your last shitty time as the Jackal. So for beyond to turn her into a villain to use against Ben, Oh, that's, that's actual drama. That's actual intrigue and power. Yeah. Oh my God. It doesn't look terrible. Like it's no, not it's a bad, it's not a bad design. It's a pretty okay design. It's, um, I, I'm I, I'm disappointed that it's Ashley Kafka because I feel bad for that character. Like she but really maybe got that's cool. Up. Like maybe that's okay because like I should want her like I because I care. Maybe that oh, means they that... want you to feel bad one hundred percent. And the fact that her story ends as tragically as it does, where you're like, man. And then it's like, well, she wasn't even re the real Ashley Kafka. The real Ashley Kafka was dead. This one was a clone that had a really even worse life. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so that's a shame. I'm going to say C tier. I agree. Because I, 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 I read that Gold Goblin book, which I liked, but she was one of the worst. She was one of the weakest parts of it. I get, well, because we she's just like, had, take your sins back. Take them back. We, we had to, we had like, to finish it? it off. We had too much stuff hanging around. And again, Kafka, much better Osborne villain, much better Ben villain. She fights Peter a few times. Yes. But it's really only incidental that he happens to be there. She, she does have new powers, too. She has a weird goblin glare, but she only uses it once. Uh, yeah, it's it's it, because they don't want you to think pen and stare. Um, I uh, oh, we should also mention that she was invented like what last year? <laughs> uh, yeah, for yeah for the Beyond Dark. So yeah, only a couple years ago, like two years ago. Yeah, like two three um, years ago. Yeah, I'd say she's probably C tier, maybe B. Like she could, she has potential to, to to rise, but I'd say C. She's never really done anything that's like, oh man, you really nailed it. And, and like, I almost want to dock some points because like another new goblin. Well, it's been a couple right. of years, so I guess we got to do another one. Exactly. Speaking of goblins, how about 
Jane Godby, Hollow's Eve. Terrible Ooh. name, terrible powers. Uh, great look, great design, yeah, amazing design. That's the whole reason this character exists. It's the punchline effect. She's punchline. Uh, Spider Gwen. She looks great. Her co- her mask thing is horrible. I I hate it so much. I know that like there's a mini series, and I know it's fine. That they God. rushed right into because they're like, no, people are going to be all in on Hollow's Eve. We know. And plus, like they might not be sooner than later we should hurry up and she's and, and she's one of the there. worst parts of that dark web story yes. it's just in a thing where everything is wrong the fact that they turned one of the nicest ladies into a villain for no other reason than to justify ben's continued turn to the dark side yes boo 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 uh i'd say d i mean she's a fail but she's not but, unsalvageable. But Another cost- writer D. who cares might, yeah. Again, on the strength of costume alone, costume makes her a D. It, can, it pulls her right out of the failure pile because that's a, such a good because it's just hobgoblin, but a girl. It is, and again, another writer who gives a shit might actually be able to come on in and save her one day. Yes, absolutely. You could. She's that. she's not so far gone now. It's like, no, you've ruined everything about her. There's nowhere to go but down. Savable. Yes. Uh, Milkman, Jackal Ben should uh, uh, Jackal Ben fit should be the default for Warren. <laughs> when he comes uh, back, he's like, oh, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this guy, 9947, uh, are there no plant-based villains? Way less uh, not than that I think. can recall. Yeah. Uh, KB, Joel, you look good. You've been working out? No, quite the opposite. I've been eating more, sleeping too much. <laughs> no, I've been fucking destroying myself the last couple months. Scarlet Hottie, Avi Arad is the most terrifying Spider-Man villain. Keeps me up at night to this day. <laughs> How how did they never create a Toy Man villain for Spider-Man? I know. And he's Who is just that? Average. The action figure, that's what you call him. Yeah. Uh, Philip Kelton, what the heck happened to Spider-Man and Batman comics? Uh, Batman's going strong, Spider-Man comics. I mean, yeah. too much too much involvement, too many cooks in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, Batman's been great. That last arc ended super, super strong. <laughs> yeah. Uh, stupid Sandwich, we need to fill your Green, Gar- Green Goblin um, uh, Marvel Legends figure stack. Have they never made one of those? I don't think so. Okay, see, I pitched another show to Sal where we need to do, like, comic and nerd merch that never got made. Yeah. Add that to the list, Sal, of merch that never got made. Right? By the way, uh, no um, no, uh, no cardiac figure. Yeah, oh, that's a shame, too. So he's weird. A, he's a fun-looking character. Yes. No, not even a mini, not even a Funko. I know, it's weird. Uh, no, uh, Liz Allen is, she's a symbiote, doesn't count. We're not doing Liz Allen. Um, also, not that... even really a Spider-Man villain anymore. She's fucking with Venom and all the other symbiote characters. Exactly, exactly. Uh, let's see, we got Cadaverous. Ah, uh, Cadaverous. Most what a... laughable name in Spider-Man history. Oh, boy, you th- this is an anime, not even one time, kids. This is what happens when you anime up Spider-Man villains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, this was uh, invented in 2019. By J.J. Abrams and his kid. Yes. Uh, bless that about him, the better. There's no, there's... There's nothing going on here. I mean, the costume, it, yeah, it looks like an anime character. It doesn't look like a Spider-Man character. doesn't fit. doesn't work. It's terrible. I didn't I, even finish the damn book. I read the first issue. I'm like, that's plenty. It's just not worth your time. It's just straight up not worth your time. It's Shame, too, because I was excited to see Sarah Pacelli's art again. Yeah. He doesn't look as bad as some of the other characters in the F-tier, but it's he true. is an F-tier character, so goodbye, Gadaverus. Just in concept um, and in everything else. Exactly. Uh, Regent. Ah, uh, Roman. Regent, Yes. Who created, had a very interesting history. Yes, uh, created for Secret Wars. Uh, he's the regent of their world. Oh, no, was it Secret? No, because he was uh, for Renew Your Vows. Yeah, we first in Secret in... Wars. Oh, that's right. That was a Secret Wars book. Oh, my God. I totally forgot. Yeah, he's the regent of the C- of the Renew Your Vows universe. That's r- Oh, my God. I totally spaced yeah, his, that that was the thing. His whole motivation is stealing powers from heroes so that he can fight Doctor Doom. That's right. That was his motivation. Holy shit. Yes. Oh, my Uh, God. And then they put him into the real universe. Uh, What is he the regent of? What is he supposed to do? What's his motivation? He's an F. Still, same thing. Same thing he wants. Well, no, they actually, they gave him uh, the Punisher kills the Marvel Universe motivation, where his family was killed in a fight between the Avengers and the Masters of Evil, and he hates all hero kind because of it. Interesting, this really felt to me like Dan Slott had a pitch for an Avengers story, but he had to do it the last couple of years of Spider-Man, because again, fighting Spider-Man, really incidental. Yes, yeah. Uh, 2015 was his invention. Um, He has... He, he's he's not an he's not a terrible looking 
villain. No, he's got a nice whack of a uh, dark side and Mongol to him, which again yeah. looks like no other Spider-Man villain. One hundred percent, which is, normally is a ding, but this one it's like okay, if he's if you want to make him a Spider-Man villain or make him a larger threat to the Marvel universe, Even okay, industrialist, cool name, Augustus Roman. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'd say C or D. Yeah, you know, he's, someone could do something with him, but not as a Spider-Man villain. He kind of whiffs it as a Spider-Man yeah. villain. But again, hey, if Jed McKay wants to dig him out for Avengers, I think he would actually be a pretty solid Avengers level threat. Exactly. Uh, Captain Kuhn Kafka is corrupted by Norman Sins. She's salvageable. Yeah. Yep. I mean, she's dead now, so you'd have to like literally resurrect her. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Philip Kelton, uh, the arc that claimed the Joker is just as crazy because uh, another Joker messes with the multiverse instead of ex existential horror of looking at reality. That is a uh, run on sentence description of what happened in the book. Yes. Indeed. Uh, so yeah, Regent, nah, nah, I'd see your D. Uh, yeah. D in execution currently, C only in his potential. And design. Again, I do like the design of him. Uh, what's it called? Mr. Negative is an A tier ah, yes. villain because it worked so well. And he keeps coming game. back and in other stuff too. And you know what people forget? You know, people give the Spencer run a lot of shit. The last story Spencer wrote with him, which was actually kind of like the last Mr. Negative story, yes. was actually really solid. Agreed. Uh, he's never been in a like horrible story. He's never been embarrassing. Yeah. Created 2007, by the way. Uh, yeah, I think he works. You know, the video game has cemented him as a long as a top player. Yeah, top player. Uh, I don't know if I love Mr. Negative as a character. Like, I don't want to always read Mr. Negative stories, but I, I think love it him works. When he debuted. Yeah, no, me either. But he has like grown on me. He's a grower. That Mr. Negative. <laughs> yes, and it, the 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 idea, the decision, the the design. It's seemingly boring and simple, but it mm. works. The, and the, uh, the very two face esque inner pathos of a good man trapped by his darker half. I like his henchmen too, the inner demons. Yeah, I never think about Two Face because of all the other accoutrements that follow him, like his demon, uh, uh, you know, henchmen and his whole, uh, you know, corporate uh, backing and everything. And, and I'm and I'm like a yakuza boss too. Yeah, I, I have this like Japanese Asian flavor to me that again, no other Spider Man villain really has. Exactly. No, I like it. I, I yeah. like it. So I, and I think, and he, he's, he's, he's broken free. They'll put him in a Monta. Like you can put him next to the Kingpin and no one would be like, he Oh, that's slain. He doesn't look stupid now. I agree. No. So he's an eight tier, maybe Fair even enough. S I don't know. And also, you know, another like Spider-Man villain who's a gang boss, which used to be more common, but isn't as much a thing anymore. Yes. Yeah. No, he's up there with, he's better than Silvermane. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think anyone would argue that anymore. Mm -hmm. Uh, and finally, of course, we have Chasm. Uh, the sad, sad final nail in the coffin of Ben Riley. Th this is more embarrassing than Jackal. This really yes. is. This this is a steel-toed nut kick of like, why, why did you even bother to make us give a shit about him again for like a year and beyond? Why did you bother making him a good guy again if you were just going to do exactly what you fucking did before? Yeah, no, it's horrible. It was a terrible decision. It was a terrible execution. Kicks off uh, one of the worst modern comic events of all time in Dark Web. What does his Spider-Man costume have to do with his powers or his motivation? Like, why, why does he look like an evil Spider-Man if he's not, like in any way themed to be an evil spider-man well you see he fell in goo sal and the goo right like goo? dot 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 <laughs> also if you can defeat him by just having a simple rational conversation with him you've already failed which they never do in the entire story even which... in dark web dark web was the worst where they're like oh you could just do the same thing to him that you did to madeline and we never did and they just what? don't and he's not it's not like he he runs away it's not like we have that like you know seventh heaven drama of him being <laughs> like no and runs away it, no, they he just stands there. They just put him in purgatory or whatever and just let him sit there. And, and I'm he's like, in the you goddamn can... purgatory embassy. And he's going to yeah. stay there until a writer remembers that he's there. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, and, it's, uh, it's and, so and, and Yeah. It's so fucked up that Goblin Queen Madeline Pryor gets to pull a hero Houdini at the end of that story, but they don't do it for Ben. Right. It's really weird. Um, so you got that. Uh, so he's an F because like you've, F minus. And also, it never came from a place of genuine creativity. You could, you, you just read the the backups and read the descriptions from the editors who, for whatever reason, want to sign this effing picture, where they're like, uh, 
we didn't have any like oh we only did beyond because of this other like outgoing editor who really liked ben riley and we wanted to give him a send-off because we were never gonna do anything with him uh yeah. so we and decided oh he was gone and then yeah as soon as we were he was gone we turned him into a villain and for no reason and it all it's all because of like the idiot principle like it's none of it has to do with anything organic tangible or interesting it's no not even like it's fun no nothing no, no no logical reason that story only exists because everyone involved is acting as their worst stupidest self and it's such yeah. a shame because i'll go on record i liked beyond i thought beyond did really fun. good for rehabbing ben's image as a character i'm like oh cool now you have an extra spider-man if yeah you want, and you can spin ben off into another thing and he can ride off into the sunset you ended this on a happy note then in the last three issues nope no he behaves like a lunatic for no reason and then becomes a bad guy because then, he needs some action figure he, he behaves like a lunatic and spider-man acts like a dick to facilitate this no i'm not gonna put the helmet on no i'm yeah. not gonna do any of these things fuck you yeah. guy who no, i told my brother two issues ago right it's like it was written by somebody else terrible basically J just uh, the worst the captain coon mr negative lost something after his identity was outed slot also feels like the only one who uses him for both the game and that last cartoon show Meh. Also, Mr. Negative is the only is only interesting in the game. Nah, I think a lot of people would disagree with you. But the comic got there eventually. It, the comic book did catch up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ray Farr, Joel's take on Phil Yurik Hobgoblin. I think we talked about it, but feel yeah. free. Again, I, I I thought it was interesting enough because he's like not in it 100% for villainy right away. He's like, no, I want to like get chicks and, you know, pull myself up in the world and everything. Right. Cat lawyer will defend for treats. I want to see Mr. Negative interact with other characters. He was fun in that cloak and dagger mini. He oh, can team yeah. up with Purple Man or fight Daredevil. I would love to see Mr. Mere Negative fight Daredevil or, or Iron Man. That would be good. Yeah, he would be a good fit for that. Because, yeah, I'm just like a gang boss most days. Exactly. Uh, Pop Culture Guy 3000. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't say things you can't take back. Something that is the worst event would have all the bad tie-ins. Dark Web has better tie-ins than the main story. You know what? Fair enough, Pop Culture Guy. I will give you that. The tie-ins are actually, like, just worlds better than the main event. I should say the worst main event. You're right. The tie-ins. Yeah because they're completely different stories written by people who didn't give a fuck about what was going on in the main exactly. thing and they're like we're we're just gonna do our own thing over here okay yeah no the dark web tie-ins <laughs> the x-men dark web tie-ins are well written and very much uh, have so. phil noto art who could and, argue and built off important stuff that duggan was doing about the summers brothers having you know heat with each other and being at each other's throat hell the miss marvel one was a nice little return home to be like hey we haven't seen these characters in like forever even after exactly. she got her own show and everything let's see what they're doing right so yeah that's uh th those are some of the most uh recent creations in the spider-man's rogues gallery a we've ranked them losers. a lot of losers uh two winners really in like the last 20 plus years only yeah. two it's taken 20 years and it's more lun and the inherit and uh and and mr negative yep that's those it. are the only two wow and i don't even really like more lun so you know yeah, and I mean, you could argue both these characters where it's, I mean, geez, it, their strongest story is even as good as, like, the weakest, I don't know, the weakest shocker story. <laughs> exactly. And it's like, yeah, when, when you get to the heart of it, how many of my, how many uh, uh, Scarecrow, oh, I'm sorry, Scarecrow, a Scorpion or Vulture stories do I have compared to these characters? Yeah. Few. F Very, Very few. few. Um, But yeah. But uh, we want to... <laughs> We want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thank you for your suggestions and your ideas. Let us know your favorite new Spider-Man villain that was yeah. created in the last 20 years in the comments down below and uh, continue the chat. We'll uh, see you guys next time with an all new episode of Elseworlds Exchange. Don't forget to check out Joel over on YouTube.com slash Cape Joel and support us. The best way to do so is by subscribing to the channel, click the bell for notifications, and then click the rest of the notifications to let you know when we're going live, which of course normally is on Fridays uh, after 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you want to see us in person, not Joel, but myself, uh, you could come over to to the Joe Kubert School of Art on May 20th. That is on Saturday. Uh, it is at 1 p.m. We're going to be, this is to say, the team of Comic Pop is going to be there. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to do a live show. We're going to hang out and, uh, you know, do, do a whole Q&A and everything like that. Oh, yeah. If you decide to go, uh, there's in the chat a little, like, Google form. Let us know. RSVP. Uh, mm -hmm. It's free. Admission's free. You just go. Just go. Uh, but if you want to get there beforehand, because it starts at 1 o'clock, go to the comic book store downstairs called Dewey's Comic City and, and buy some comic books. And then go through the door, check out the uh, historic Joe Kubert School of Comic Book Arts, the only comic book school in the world. So go check it out. 
I wish I could um, be there. That sounds like I a know, blast. It'd be great. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a lot, a lot of fun. Also, it's on the train line, it's on the bus line, nice. and there's plenty of parking available. So come on by uh, May twentieth, Saturday, one p.m. Joe Kubert School of Art in Dover, New Jersey. There's a Google form in the chat, and it will be in the comments down below if you're watching this after the fact. Uh, so click that if you are going and get, do an RSVP. Let us know if you're going to go and answer some questions. There's like three or four questions in there. Uh, Ray Farr finally wraps up to say, sorry for the hobby repeat question. I just got off work halfway through the stream and I just got back. Keep them hey, no Thank worries. you very much, Ray. Thank you for your support. Thank you all for being here. Thanks to our Super Chatters for sponsoring today's show. And we'll see you guys next time with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Joel. So long. Bye-bye.